Hi friends. So today I am on my way to hang out with an artist named Helen Shields. She is an amazing stained glass artist, needle felting. She paints and draws and all the things. So I want to go and like tour her creative spaces and pick her brain about being an artist and maybe learn a few things. And I wanted to bring you along with me. So let's go see Helen. Meet Helen Shields. Hello. <laughs> Helen is from the UK, as you might be able to tell when she starts talking. A little bit of an accent. Right. <laughs> to us. Not to you, but to <laughs> us. <Yes. laughs> But today I was um, so blessed to be able to come to Helen's studio spaces and explore. And we had a glass lesson. She taught me so much. So thank you so much for that. Um, and I just wanted to sit and chat for a bit and show you guys Helen's creative spaces. She actually has more than one, um, which is good and bad probably. Yep. <laughs> and we just wanted to talk about all things art and creativity and navigating creative life through all the things. And so... Tell us just how long have you been creating and how did you even start? So I've been creating since I was little. Always had a pen mm -hmm. in my hand, loved drawing, that type of thing. Um, I used to do an awful lot of painting, so watercolour, acrylic, etc. Mm -hmm. Then I went to art school when I was 21. I went later. <laughs> um, I lived in Alaska for three years and worked, okay. trying to decide what to do, and art was my calling. Okay. So I went to university in the UK and their system is very different. Mm -hmm. So they specialize in one area. They don't, you don't do everything like you do here. Mm -hmm. So my first year of art college, I did 10 different disciplines. I did illustration, I did clay, I did printmaking, I did textile design, all of those different things. So you choose which one you want to major in. Okay. So I went in wanting to do graphic design because I thought that's what would suit me. And mm -hmm. I came out doing printed textiles. <laughs> Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh, you guys get to meet Archie. We join with Archie. Hello. <laughs> this He's is my her. studio companion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to help out and keep the iron lizards and things for me. That's awesome. So you did printed textiles, and now tell us what you're doing now. So I went from printed textiles, and I worked remotely with an agent for quite a few years, and then I started to kind of do just different disciplines. I started felting. Um, so needle felting is one of the things that I do quite a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started to buy quite a bit of glass. I really like glass ornaments, glass in the windows, that type of thing. It got to the point where it was stupidly costing me a lot of money because what I wanted I couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get people to design stuff for me. Uh -huh. So in the end I found a local course, um, the lovely Caroline Lambert. Um, and I never looked back. I absolutely loved it. It just okay. floated my boat. Um, I do mostly um, stained glass, copper foil and leaded. I'm not a huge fuser, okay. but I do like to... Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I have one at home, so yeah. I'm totally used to it. It's okay. Um, I like to paint on the surface. Mm -hmm. So um, we use something called um, a rouge paint, which has okay. to be fired in a kiln. Um, and... I like that to kind of add a bit of design, so it, it takes my kind of artistic streak with my mark making, mm -hmm. applies it to the glass, and then I can kind of meld the two worlds together. I love that. I yep. love that. So you make a lot of small pieces. Yep. And but what's the biggest piece you've ever made? So the biggest piece I've ever made is um, fifty six inches across by about forty two inches high. Wow. And what was that? That was a giant commission for the Air War College, uh, in fact, for the SAS, um, which is the Space College um, down at Maxwell. Okay. And it was a great big kite with a set of wings over the front, their learning emblem, which is a um, Aladdin's kind of lantern type thing. Mm -hmm. And it had all of the course people's names on it. Oh, nice. And clouds where they'd been. So it was a whole mix of leaded, copper foiled, and also painting and some etching. Okay, nice. Yeah. That's amazing. So I guess we'll look at your setup. And yep. This is your glass setup. And you do yep. things other than stained glass too, though. You said needle felting. Yep. But you also uh, like Christmas cards. Yes. So you so still, still do like some paint. illustrating yep. and painting and stuff. And too. scrapbooking. Yeah. I like scrapbooking too. Yeah. Um, I think like any artist, I might have a bit of a, a, an addiction to art. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
learned some stuff that I haven't even learned how to use yet. And I'm like, because you know, it's a plus. Clay, so that's, that's <laughs> another thing I've started in the last year is I took a clay course. Mm -hmm. So I'm now starting to do ceramics. Um, I'm lucky that my kiln does both things. It does glass yeah. and ceramics. So this is a, a Christmas present that I've still got to work out, which is to be doing slips. So I will get to it. Okay. <laughs> nice. I love it. You have all your glass. All so yeah, glass. so I have this big unit here, which has my bigger pieces of glass in. And then these are off cuts and scraps. I keep everything. I don't waste it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have kind of a scrap bin for the very small pieces, which I pass on to studios if they want to do resin work or oh, something like that with it. That's a good idea. Um, idea. Yeah. And then, and then it's just, it's a corner of the garage, too hot in summer, too cold in winter, <laughs> not enough light. <laughs> but isn't that how it is? Do you know, I read a book um, a couple years ago about Stephen King, and he's creative, as we all know, a writer, but he started out writing, sitting on top of his washing machine in his laundry room, because he didn't have anywhere else to yep. work. So if you've got the urge to create, yep. you just get it. <laughs> Find a you, corner somewhere. You make your space. Yeah. You definitely make your Absolutely. space. Absolutely. I mean, ideally, I'd love a, like an old stable block and I could have oh, each discipline yes. in each room. Wouldn't that so be nice? Like, have to move stuff. Yeah. And my husband wouldn't be helping. <laughs> <I'm laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. So we're going to tour this shop and then we're going to go look at your other spaces. Um, and we'll add that in in a minute. But I wanted, while we're sitting here chatting, I wanted to, we talked earlier about well, you know, getting stuck sometimes yep. creatively, getting blocked, and or just feeling kind of meh, burnt out. And so you had mentioned that earlier this year you kind of went through that, and now yep. you're kind of coming out of it. So yep. did anything in particular sort of pull you out of that, or a firm talking to is always good because mm -hmm. I do think as artistics we tend to be a little bit more up down with our emotions. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I think the pandemic and yeah, outside global stuff and missing home and all sorts had a lot of kind of, I, I just felt sorry for myself. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to give yourself a slap and say, right, come on, get on with it. Yeah. Um, but I do think artistically, we have peaks and troughs. Yeah. We have months where we are super, super productive and yeah. we get annoyed when we have to stop to go and pick the children up from school or do other bits and pieces. Right. And then we have other months where I'll sit on the sofa and I don't do anything. Yeah. I just can't get motivated. I have the ideas. Right. I'm just not interested. I just don't want to do it. I'm burnt out. I'm fed up. Yeah. Just, so I try to give myself a bit of grace in those periods mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know, I will get on with it. I do find things like commissions will get me started. Mm -hmm. And quite often once I've started, the ball continues rolling. Yeah. So I do think when you're doing things, if you stop for whatever reason, if you've, I don't know, there's something you've got to go and do or whatever, it's harder to get back into it. Mm -hmm. I think when the ball is in motion, yep. you keep in motion. Yep. Um, I often find I'm most productive when I'm really busy because I crave that time. Yeah. And when I find a little gap of time, I'll get on with it. Whereas when I've got lots of time, I'm like, well, I can do it tomorrow. Right. I can watch Netflix for I can, yeah. 12 hours I today. Just, <laughs> I'm just going to sit out in the sunshine for a bit or I'm yeah. just going to do a bit of shopping or... Again, that can be a good kind of impetus to go out and do stuff is go and see what's out on the high street. Mm -hmm. Go out for a walk. Right. Take photos. I love taking photos. I have so many photos on my, my kind of film or on my, on my iPhone. Um, I find um, searching Pinterest can help, but it can also hinder. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a wicked balance, that one. Yeah. So it can get you kind of going, oh, yeah, I'd like to have a go at doing that. I think also the other thing is if you're a maker in life, sometimes you get burnt out trying to make things to sell. Yeah. So sometimes I'll just say, actually, I'm just going to make something for me. Something I'm trying to implement at the moment is Sunday is my time. Mm -hmm. It's not for creating anything to make. It's not for doing the jobs I think I ought to be doing. Right. It's for doing something that I want to do for me, for the house here. Because again, that's another thing. I'll make stuff and think, oh, I really want to keep it, but not only need to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and I, I sometimes struggle, and I think a lot of artists struggle with making stuff to sell versus making stuff from your soul. Yes. And sometimes you get to the point where you need to sell stuff because you yeah. need to buy more supplies or pay rent or whatever, but then it starts to get to a point where it's almost, people can sort of sense that, yeah. and then it's, 
less appealing, kind of. The hawk's not in it. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I think that we have to be really guarded and find the balance in that. And I also think as well that when you go down the avenue of making something that you hope will sell, quite often it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Quite often I find that the stuff that you make that you get excited about, other people get excited about. Yep. So when you start to shop like this, yeah, people will come in and they'll set, like you say, they'll sense that from you. Right. Um, but <laughs> why? Excuse my dog. <laughs> I can't have it enough. <laughs> He's very friendly. He's like, I love you, Aunt Vigo. He says she smells lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, off you go. That's funny. <laughs> well, and I love the fact that you talked about kind of being in that slump sometimes and having days where you don't want to create anything because so many artists go through that and I think we don't sometimes understand it or we just think yeah, I'm broken crazy. or my creativity is all gone and it's never coming back and so if you guys knew Helen she is very prolific uh, artist I mean she <laughs> makes so much stuff and she has a varied and wide range of interests so to hear that you have days where you're like man I don't want to do anything makes me feel better I think also, you know, a lot of people say, you say I'm prolific, I don't feel what I am. Yeah. I feel that I could be more prolific than I am. I could be more disciplined. Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing as well. The spaces I'm in are not cohesive for me working as a work schedule. Yeah. Because I'm in the home, I walk past, I'm like, oh, I'll put the laundry on. Right. And I think, oh, I haven't got something out for dinner, or I'll walk the dog, or right. I'll... And I think those things can eat into your day and if you can be more disciplined about saying, actually, right, from nine to five is studio time. Yeah. And going into that space and not allowing you to scroll on your phone, talk and to actually people like you're going to work. Yeah, you're yeah. going to work. And that's the balance I don't have yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of that is because of where my spaces are. They are in the house. Yeah. Um, so I'm constantly interrupted by furry things or children or a husband coming home or right you know that type of thing so I think it does make a difference if you can get that mental switch yes going so do you think I mean I know you're talking about still trying to find that balance like how do you navigate being a mom and being a wife and running a household and then having commissions and I know that you're in Southern Art Makers yep. shop and then you are working at Board and Brush and teaching there you teach yep. at Southern Art Makers you also have a space there and you have yep. all these things going on like, like, how do you carve out that time? I mean, I don't know that's something you're still trying to work out, but... Yeah, it's a balance I haven't met yet. Yeah. Um, I think, again, it's this thing as artist makers, you know, if you're needing a certain amount of money each month, it's mm -hmm. very hard, and that's where I find it very difficult. Yeah. Hence, working for Wooden Brush, because it gives me a little bit more regular income. Right. Which takes the pressure off, which can be quite nice. Yeah. Um, so again, I found that that if you're pressured to be making stuff, you come down that avenue, like you were saying, for, um, I've just got to get this made so I can sell it. Yeah. And the love isn't shown in it then. Yeah. Which I do think does show in your work. Right. I agree. Completely. Um, I haven't found the balance. And I'm, <laughs> I'm turning 49 at the end of this month and I still haven't found the balance. Yeah. No, so I'm with you. I think... I do think if you can have a specific space that you go out to that is only a workspace, that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I set myself up for the day, so I know that if I get up early, walk my dog, take my daughter to school, and have a shower before I go, when I come back, it's work time. Yeah. And I find that by doing that, I tend to get on a lot better than if I come back and think, oh, I'll just do this and I'll do that. And then right. I look and I think, oh, it's lunchtime. And then three hours later, I'm having to go back out again to go pick the daughter up. And then we're into dinner time. And right. So I think if you can kind of say, actually, no, this is going to be studio time, then that's what I do. Yeah. And it works. And those are my productive days. So do you think that, I mean, some people, are you in the home studio camp? Or I wish I had a studio away from home camp. I would love a studio away from home. Just from, from that the is a specific space. Yeah. yeah. I mean... I'm very lucky that I have like three studio spaces within the house. <laughs> yeah. right. I feel quite bad when I say that because I know a lot of people just work in one corner and, and I have done that for many, many years. And in the UK, I would be doing that because our houses are much, much smaller. Mm -hmm. um, but here, you know, I need a hard floor for doing the glass on. Right. My office upstairs has got carpet. It doesn't work. Right. Um, yep. So if I could, I would love to do that. But again, you're then increasing because you're paying rent or something like that. That's true. Which means you've got to create more, more yeah. to actually just get back to where you were. Yeah, that's so true. So I think, again, it's a mental game. Yeah. I think if 
mentally I get myself in the right position and I get in the flow and I start to create, I feel I can step back and look and go, great, I've done all of this, my space will be renewed. That's where I'm frustrated at the moment. You know, my space has still not got all nice and fresh stuff in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of drives you to get more stuff done. Yeah, that makes total sense. So last question. Yeah. What do you find inspires you the most, would you say? Like if you're needing some inspiration, do you go to a certain place or? I do love Instagram. For an artist community, mm -hmm. I much prefer Instagram over Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say probably just getting out. Mm -hmm. I think as artists, I have the strangest thoughts in the middle of the night, in the shower in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll look at something. So again, silly things like going around Home Depot. Yeah. And going, oh, what can I make with that? Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, pointing cases, the tulips that I'm making at the moment, it's copper pipe. I looked at it and went, oh, you know? And again, I've done the same thing with like these pieces, you know? Uh -huh. That's just a wiring that I stripped out, a uh -huh. piece of copper pipe, and then I put a glass bird into it. Love it. Um, so, and then once you do that, things trigger. Yeah. So again, it comes back to this, not just working better, but when you are doing more, more ideas come. Yep. You kind of start pinging off, you'll start in one direction and ping off into another direction. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, so I've been doing these tulips and now I'm thinking I'd really love to do a show based on gardening. So I'd love to do like a great big full size glass fork, you know, mm -hmm. with the trucks and onions. So my mum's got a big garden and she she plaps and hangs her onions to dry. Nice. You know, and I'm thinking, yeah, oh, that would look really cool in glass. Mm -hmm. So my mind starts rolling and that usually takes me on to the next thing that I'm going to do. Yeah, love that. And it's all about momentum. Yeah. Once you gain momentum, and sometimes I have found in the most strangest of ways, I have to do something completely unrelated yeah. to the area that I'm trying to gain yeah. momentum in. And then once I start gaining momentum, I kind of come back. Yeah. So, you know. So Again, ask his friends. So, you know, yourself, Heather, you know, I'll, I'll go and, I'll, and we'll start talking. And I'm like, yeah, have you thought about doing that? And yeah, and yeah you come back going. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. artistic friends are huge for me. Yeah. You know, um, last summer I spent two weeks in quarantine in the UK. And uh -huh. it was with my class instructor, Caroline. And it was amazing. Yeah. I came away from there buzzing. You're like, can I quarantine some more? <laughs> well, I'm trying that again this year. <laughs> but again, because it's somebody's other's perspective, and, it, and if you know them well enough, like I do with Carol, I actually turn around and go, no, that's crap. <laughs> and, you and I think that's, that's important. so important. Yeah, rather than somebody just goes, oh, yes, it's lovely. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I want someone to go, actually, that doesn't really work. Have you thought about doing this? Yeah. What about doing that? And yeah. that is a huge kind of boost to kind of say, well, I hadn't thought about that because mm -hmm. we all look at things differently. Yeah. So if you all said to us, oh, well, you go and paint a tulip, we would all approach it completely differently and yep. you'd have completely different end results. Exactly. So I think, you know, that's a massive thing as well. Just having that artistic community around you yep. and it gets you wanting to make. If you start seeing people making lots of stuff, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So do you find when you're teaching that that inspires you to be like, okay, I appreciate y'all, but now I'm ready to go back and make myself? Yes. So the people I love to teach most are children mm -hmm. because they don't have any fear. Yes. They're not trying to get that picture perfect finished image that you're presenting to them as the class prototype. Mm -hmm. They will ping off in different directions. So yeah. case in point, um, felt of pumpkins. Mm -hmm. I did this class back in the UK. And I had like lots of little faces on them and all that type of stuff. I had a little girl come and she went, I want to do a cat. <laughs> and actually, when she'd done it, although I didn't copy her design, I came back going, oh, I really want to try. And, and it fired me off to go and do something else. I said, right. well, have I tried to do this? Have I tried to do that? Right. And I think that's definitely, you know, something that kind of fires me up. Yeah. Teaching's great, but it can also weigh you out. Yes, I can see yeah. that for sure. <laughs> Excuse my dog, she <laughs> I know it's because I have one at home and he's, he's like, like, I can smell it. I have a friend. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at some of your creative spaces. Okay. And I want to show them your house as well because just the amount of color, oh, tell them the name of your social media and all that. So my name is The Color House. 
which came about because in the UK my little cottage is not very bland. Every room is a different colour and we're talking bright colours so I've got a red downstairs loo, I've got a pink kitchen, my bedroom's turquoise, my hall is yellow. Um, I tried to do the very quintessential British classic country. I lived with it for three years, hated it and changed it. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see just walking through your house, you have all these pops of colour and yeah. rugs and everything. It's just amazing. So I, mean, yeah. I love that you surround yourself with basically inspiration and colour. And it doesn't even have to be in your creative space and things that you're making. Just everywhere you are, there's... And I think colour for me is important. I've learned that I'm not... A neutral I can I can appreciate somebody's house I've got a friend who's got a beautiful house it's all neutrals greys whites creams it I love it and I think oh I'd love to live in something like this and then I live in it and I think no it's not me yeah and I think that's where I'm frustrated here is because we live in a beige house and it's a rental so I can't really do what I'd want to do right with that. <laughs> but I think it's important that you bring your things around you yes again from other artists the stuff uh, yeah. I make myself mm -hmm. and again a lot of that is driven by cost I'd love to have more artist work I just can't afford it yeah um but I can kind of make some bits for myself that I think oh I'd like you know I need this made or I need that made or right. I fill that wall and, and again that's an inspirational bit where you can kind of go well what would I want on my walls right and quite often what you like other people will turn around and go oh yeah yeah cool well, let's go take a okay. tour all right, so this is your this is my barrier. glass space. Okay. Um, so I have um, an old chef table because I tend to when I'm cutting glass I like to stand up when I'm cutting. It's a lot easier than sitting down. Um, and then I use a stool to sit down when I start soldering and things like that. So I have um, a large crate here which has the really big sheets of glass in, um, which was left over from the big project that I did recently. Um, I have kind of wooden boards, um, which I use, as you can see here, to kind of place work onto as I'm working on things so I can carry them back and forth because I don't have water in the garage. I need to take them in and wash them. Okay. Um, I have my grinder, which is an essential part of kit for just taking off all the rough edges, everything else like that. Then my tools are all just in a pot here. Um, I have my glass storage, which are the what we call hobby sheets or 12 by 12 sheets, and slightly smaller. Colour organised, of course, because I have to have everything colour organised. <laughs> and then on this shelf is all of my um, scrap glass. So it's pieces that aren't big enough to go into here. Um, but glass is so expensive that I use every single last piece that I can, even down to the small bits. The next shelf up is kind of a holding space for clay that's going to go into the kiln. Um, and then down at the bottom, I have all of my um, leads for when I'm doing leaded pieces and then I have things like this which is again colour yummy oh. which is all my glass samples so it's all the different types of glass what the fritz look like which I can then kind of pull together so when I'm trying to do you know talk about commissions and things I can say well that glass would look like that next to that glass and it just mm. makes it an awful lot easier um I made these last summer in the two-week retreat that I was talking about okay great idea um and then underneath is just kind of templates that I keep, uh, extra kiln shelf materials, and then just kind of newspaper for doing patina and bits and pieces. I've got all my kind of tools up here. So these are kind of all in tins. So this is all my glass painting kit, so lovely badger brush. Um, and then these are kind of like my leading tools. So again, you know, just lots and lots of tubs of things. Um, we talked about inspiration. Um, one of the things I've been doing recently, this was, they're a bit dead now, um, but these were tulips that I bought just from supermarket. And as they were starting to go off, I often find I love the tulips best then. So they were kind of, you know, starting to kind of go off in funny angles and things like that. And that's what inspired this latest make, which is um, my kind of tulips. Um, they're not quite finished yet, so I'm gonna, I've still got to patina these and finish putting a few more bits to these um, together, but they'll kind of sit together in a vase. So again, this is what I was talking about, is the glass has been painted and then fired, which is what gives you all the details on the petals. 
rather than just a straight piece of glass. I'm gonna pull one out so I can get it. Yep. Like that. If you hold it up against the light, you can probably see it. Oh yeah. Let's go look at your other space. Okay. So this is space number two, <laughs> <laughs> which is the corner of our kind of upstairs lounge area. It was gonna be for the kids and they never used it. So I've expanded into it. Um, old table lent to me by a friend. I've got my little turning wheel. Um, all my clay is stored on the floor down there. And then I've got my lovely little trolley, which has got all of my underglazes. I just use Amco Velvet Underglazes for painting all my surfaces. Um, so that's an example, just a little ornament. That's um, great. I like to kind of construct them and paint them. Um, and then I just have some kind of inspiration stuff up on the board um, of stuff I like, some of my own drawings. So you were talking about my cards and things. This was one of my Christmas cards. And I've decided I'd quite like to make him into a clay bust. Oh, he would be point. great, yeah. Yeah. So again, you know, that's kind of how something can then spiral off into something else. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much clay. I haven't touched clay for over a month a bit now. Okay. Uh, and again, this is what we talk about, these kind of peaks and troughs. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to it and then I'll probably be all clay for a couple several weeks. At the moment I'm in the glass phase. Right. So I tend to kind of go from one thing to another and then come back and then circle around. Yep, and I guess that keeps you from getting bored too. Yes. So I, I always remember one of my art teachers at school said, jack of all trades and master of none. Mm -hmm. And that's probably me. I'd get bored if I work in the same medium constantly. Right. Almost like burnout. Um, I know if I was a, and, and again, this is a, a perception thing, but if I was a proper, proper artist, I would only do one medium and I would do it really, really well and only do that, but I can't. I, I need the other things to feed me. Right. To kind of just do different surfaces and textures and that type of thing. It's just what I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And I mean, is there any, really any one kind of artist? I mean, some will tell you that, but yeah. I'm with you. I don't, I mean, if that's what you do, that's what you do. Like, yeah. that's it. So yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Cool. All so right. we'll take to space number three. Yes. Uh, again, I quite like standing up when I do a lot of work. So this is my scrapbooking table. Um, and I kind of have all my old scrapbooks, kind of knickknacks, bits and pieces, you know, the usual thing. Like I've got a, a glue drawer, which has got all my tape and glues, and then there's a tool drawer, and then, you know, that type of thing. Um, again, I've got a lot of pots. So everything has to be in pots. <laughs> So that's okay, makes it interesting. <laughs> and then um, I've got kind of computer table here, which I do a lot of work for the scrapbooking on Photoshop, that type of thing. And then in here is another storage space. And this is my guilty addiction. Um, I have- Needle felting. I have four drawers worth of needle felting fibers. Wow. And again, they're all color organized. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So they're all kind of, you know, lots of, lots and lots of yummy colors in there. Um, That's awesome. Quite nice. um, I like in my old studio, I have an awful lot of these clay storage boxes. Uh, they're great to see what you've got mm -hmm. and to be able to just kind of pull things out. So, you know, I, I, everything is stored in colors. So all my cottons and fibers. Oh yeah. Stored in colors. Um, just makes it quicker and easier to kind of pull out what you want. So when the kids were little, I used to do an awful lot of embroidery and sewing. I used to make kind of school gym bags and okay. bunting and signs and um, wooden peg hooks and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then have kind of moved on from that since the kids have kind of grown up. Yeah. Before. Yeah. So, um, so again, you know, this is an example. I'm working towards a, an Easter display at the shop. So these will all get filled up with eggs and then taken in for the Those shop. Those are wonderful. And then some of your other things still here from the holidays. Yep, some leftover bits. And this is yours, right? This That's is wet filtering. Okay. Yeah. Glare from the window. There you go. Look at this guy. So that's that's again we were talking about kind of surface texture on glass. I, I love using enamels and mm. etching and that type of thing too on glass. 
um, again that's another glass piece oh wow which is just kind of I like kind of having bits coming off that mm -hmm. type of stuff um, so wreaths nice yeah very good thank you for sharing your that's spaces okay. with us and talking about all creative things and another one over here I get distracted very easily <laughs> Look at the color. It's a lovely friend made those for Christmas for me. Those are wonderful. Thank you, Helen, for sharing your spaces and all your thoughts on creativity with us. We deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thanks for having me.